Welcome to Rochdale, just a stone's throw from Manchester in the northwest. And I'm here in Manchester today because my good old mate Jack, how you doing, How's mate? It going? Jack's from the area and he's been telling me about the infamous Seven Sisters Tower Blocks, which, if you peek just from the town hall, which is beautiful, being developed in the background, beautiful town square here, just round the corner, here is one of the notorious sisters. They are very, very well known in the area as being quite a controversial housing development. Built in 1963, very brutalist architecture and known throughout the years as having some quite nefarious behaviour. So we're going to go over to the Seven Sisters, we're going to check out what it's like inside the tower blocks and then we're also going to meet a couple of residents there and see what they've got to say about what life is like in the tower blocks and what the future holds for these controversial dwellings. But we're also going to check out Rochdale. We're going to meet some of the characters, see what life's like in the northwest. Should we check it out, mate? Let's go. Let's go. So Jack's been telling me that Rochdale's had quite a lot of development in recent years. I mean, where I'm walking now is very grand, very beautiful, and not looking that shabby at all. You got your textbook weather spoons, although it is quite an impressive weather spoons. What was that building? Do you know what it was before? Um, that's been Regal Moon for as, as long as I can remember it. Looks like it was a theatre or something to Possibly. me. Yeah. Weatherspoons tend to do a lot of that. And then they sell pints for £2.20 just to bring the tone down. You got the bombings and shootings. You got the violence and crimes. So, Lord, for our sakes, teach us to take out of time. Come on, boys. One day at a time. What are you doing, chaps? Just having a play. Just having a play. What are you supposed to be doing? You don't want to go to Manchester Fire, do you? Not at all, no. You don't know what they're doing there, do you? No, I think they're just uh, trying to find. They do fishing for us, you know, fishing for the homeless. Okay. Lord, help me believe what I should be. I know that I am. Hey! Just show us the stairway. What's life in Rochdale like 2023? For my video. It's fucking shite. Why'd you say it's that? Crazy. Crazy. Too many homeless people, my yeah. friend. I'll I see this with, everywhere. Yeah. Sad, this, is, sad. this is a man here. Yeah. This is a man from supplies of food. Things, I took things from La La to Manchester with me. Yeah, we give it out to homeless charities, belly, ball, bread everywhere. Yeah. And I spread the gospel over there. Time, yeah. While he's, while he's here, yeah. I spread the gospel over there. Oh, that's I'll nice. take the balloons, don't I? Yeah, you do, you I take the bread. Make sandwiches there, over there for the homeless. So, in my so you give people free curries and rice, rice. And and to the homeless? Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Can I give you a little bit of money to help? Yeah. Uh, certainly. Yeah. It's yeah. only for years. Uh, yeah, we yeah. buy more food. Hopefully. What's your name, my friend? My name's Mohammed. 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 It's only for years. Mohammed, as, as Can my assistant as well take me some money out there? Yes, I used to do it through a shop in Manchester, yeah. 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 But now, you know, with credit crunch, we just do it five pounds. Thank you yeah, very much. Well, Mohammed. Yeah. Wendell. What's, what's your company called or what's your. Uh, YouTube, Wendell. Wendell. YouTube. Yeah. 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 Listen, Wendell. What's your I'm name? I'm all over YouTube. I'm on TikTok. What's your name? I'm on Barrow. Cheggers. Cheggers. Cheggers, yeah. I can't forget that. Yeah. You never nice forget Cheggers. I'll find you, mate. I'll tag you in. Yeah. Thank you so when you, much. Wait, tag me in when you're looking all over it to find me, Mick Cheggers. Mick yeah. Cheggers. M I C K C H E G E R S. Yeah. Your yeah. <laughs> songs are great. Awesome. Mohammed. Channel you're a legend, 786 mate. to fix, yeah? Channel 786 to fix. So Jack has lived in the Rochdale area all his life and he knows quite a bit about the local history and about what Rochdale was like in the past, the industrial history and then more of the recent history. So tell us a little bit about what grew Rochdale as a town. It was the wool and cotton production in the, in the 1800s. Um, that kind of waned in the 1960s. 60s, yeah. Yeah, and kind of stopped. So also the co-op yeah. was founded in Rochdale. That moved to Manchester in the 70s. So okay. a lot of jobs were lost. Yep. Um, but it ca kind of fell on hard times. So 70s, 80s, yeah. a lot of deprivation. A lot of deprivation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then recent times? It's got a bad rep, Rochdale. It's got a bad reputation. And why is that? Numerous grooming scandals over okay. recent years. Yeah. Uh, drug problems. There's been a documentary on BBC yeah. recently about the drug problems. Um, it has got a bad reputation, but yeah. personally, I think there's a lot going for it. Yeah. Um, the tram systems that go in and out of uh, Manchester. Yeah. All over Greater Manchester as well. Um, 
council, the government have spent a lot of money in the town centre, so there's a lot going for it now. So you it's think a it's good a town place to commute to and from work. Yeah, so a town that's got an interesting history with industry. Yeah. It's been through some hard times. Well, it's a northwest town. Yeah. There's so many of them. They're all the same, very similar. Hard working people, good, honest, hard work. Every town has its problems. Yeah, it does, yeah. You're living on the streets, are you, at the moment? Yeah, so yeah. so these streets. In and out, yeah. Yeah, in and out. Committed arson in 212. Bad alcoholic, couldn't get out of it, went to prison. Just evaded the IPP sentence. Got out, got a flat in Stockport because I can't get me housed in Rochdale. And fucking ended up wiring the electric up and getting booted out. So where are you sleeping, like, tonight? Are you on the streets tonight? I've, actually, I've got a sofa tonight. OK. Do you think it's dangerous for you to be in your position? Everywhere's dangerous, isn't it? Do you know what? There's a lot. I'm getting a lot of humility by people around there and that, you know what I mean? I never ask them for money. It's very humbling how people can fucking support me and that. Yeah. Without asking, because it feels degrading to fuck. if anything, sums up post-industrial decline in areas of Britain, like Greater Manchester, then it's sites like this. Abandoned factories, huge factories that were once the hub of the industry that fueled the growth of this area, absolutely decaying around us. And this huge structure just left to crumble and rot. These waterways would have been used as the highways to bring all the different materials that were needed to fuel the industry. Now these abandoned factories are just dumping grounds, dumping grounds for people that come and drink and take drugs in these places. You can see all the dumped clothes here, these abandoned drinking dens full of God knows what. Such a shame to see the post-industrial decline. We should have come to the flash park for our coffee, mate. You know what, though? My opinion, this is beautiful and towns need this modernisation. But everything looks the same when it's like this. No, but what looks like Stafford, where but, I used but, to live. But if you think what, what it was like... The, well, I don't know. What was it like? <coughs> it was decrepit. It, yeah. it was awful. So they've, they've, they've put money into it. They've put money into the town, which is a good thing. I visit a lot of towns in this country and Rochdale is not that bad. For some... Can I just say, though, this is the town centre. If okay. you do go near the sub suburbs, yeah. um, Failing, around the Seven Sisters, um, towards the hospital, etc. Yeah, it's a little bit different. So you get out of the town yeah, centre... There's, there's a lot of poverty. It starts to fall apart pretty quick, yeah. yeah. So these are another development of flats just opposite the Seven Sisters. Would you talk to me for... With this hair? You look great. Look at me. I'm on camera and I've got none. <laughs> What's life like in the Failing Flats? Uh, well, it depends on what day it is, really. <laughs> oh, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it could be hectic or it could be calm. It's calm now. In your opinion, which is the best block of flats? These Failing Flats or the Seven Sisters over there? These ones. These, these ones are better. Ones. What's wrong with the Seven Sisters? They're isolated. Yeah. Like, I used to live in there and they're, they're really bad. If you're from overseas and you think of England, the UK, do you think of sites like this? This is the Seven Sisters residential tower blocks in Rochdale in the northwest. Built in 1963, an incredibly utilitarian development. Now these are very notorious towers. They're an eyesore that blight the vista of the town, but also they're quite interesting for a number of reasons. And I got Jack with me. And you know this area pretty well, mate, don't you? Yeah, I've lived here for a while. There's 700 and odd flats here. Um, I think only 500 are occupied, so it's not got the best of reputations. It's a bit of an eyesore. I basically read before I came here that very recently, in the last few years, the council have been trying to knock these structures down and some of the people that still live here, they've been refusing to move and now they're thinking about redeveloping them but it's going to cost millions. millions right? Yeah, so I don't think they really know what to do with these towers at the moment, do they? Not at all, no. They kind of want to move forward with them, they want to make them more useful going forward into the modern era, but expensive and problematic 
and they've got a bit of a reputation as well. They've got a bit of a reputation of being dirty, of being unmaintained, and there are some stories of them being dangerous and unsafe. So we're going to wander around the plaza here, around the Seven Sisters, and we're going to see if we can get into the Seven Sisters, we're going to see if we can talk to any of the residents here and they can tell us what life is like living in this part of Rochdale. It stinks of piss in there. Well, you can smell it here. For reference, this is a Saturday morning about 11 o'clock. You would expect the local shop to be open. All boarded up, a sign of modern Britain. No pay zone today. And there's not much action, mate. There's not much sign of life at the Seven Sisters. It's got a real ghost town feel about it. it does. They were meant to knock four of them down, so it, uh, presumably, yeah, it may be those four. Yeah. Well, though, these ones look like there's no one in them. A couple of people's oh, washing, people some I've plants. Seen a couple of people going in and out there. Yeah, and then, but I mean, you can you can tell how little care is taken to look after these places. Look at the sign. The M's fell off. It's probably not been there for about ten years and no one's bothering to replace it. It's not aesthetical pleasing, is it? Not at all. Somebody said it's got a bad like, drug abuse problem with people in there, is that right? Is it not intimidating and stuff no, like that? Do you no. never see any issues or problems or anything? No. I know there's drugs going on, I see them doing the deals and a car will pull up and they quickly have drugs and money or exchange. And yeah, so it is going on. Yeah. But I'm not involved in any type of I, I can't business. imagine you are, mate. No. <laughs> but I do know it, because I'm like, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's only, uh, I think, about two or three hundred of these flats occupied out of seven. Okay, so we, we thought it was 500, but it might be as low as 200. Yeah, there's more like 500 out, yeah. Yeah. left in. Yeah. Um, but what happened? All, all the, the drug type. They all took the compensation when they were being demolished, so they all got about seven or eight grand. So they took the money. Nine percent drug is from these flats. They're not here anymore. Yeah. They took the money and they're ice kites, now, aren't they? Yeah. Just somewhere else. Then yeah. they're, they're offering seven and a half grand to move out. Is that right? They got it. That's why they all moved out. Wow. But then when Obi changed their minds about, or they didn't have the fundings to demolish them, nobody's getting seven grand. Um, they're staying up. Mm -hmm. But like I said. Oh, the druggy type took the seven grand and bought it off. What an absolute misappropriation of funds. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Seven and a half grand oh, to each a, vacant unit, oh, and then they're not knocking them down anyway, and people, no, a lot of people... No rent's coming in, no council tax being paid. I'll be it. I don't know, it's just not capable of running them. Apparently there's like a couple hundred that are unoccupied, is that right? Um, yeah, that, that, that's very true. Well, in a nutshell, um, the local housing association um, wanted to demolish the four, the four Charlist. There was a campaign set up um, by basically my partner, Robin Park, who was okay. the first person to put his head above the parapet, so to speak, and say this is wrong. Of course, we were a little bit upset about that. Of course, yeah. These are our homes. I heard a lot of people were like were quite understandably refusing to move as well. That's one of the things that sort of like slowed the development down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they manage to kind of... I mean, some people want to move, that's fine. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's a, a choice in, in your lifestyle. Yeah. There's many people on this estate that have lived here for decades. Of course, yeah. And it, it's their home. You're quite right in saying that there is um, a, quite a huge percentage of um, the estate empty at the moment. But plans are going forward to kind of refurb, and we're hoping that you know we can be a part of that and we're consulted on, Absolutely. on what's going to happen. Absolutely, 100% you should you be know, here. You the, know, these are our homes. Yeah. How does it feel like to live here? You get elements anywhere and we're in a society where more and more people are feeling the push. We've got more and more people with kind of chaotic lifestyles, if you will, um, and maybe turn into kind of negative coping strategies. We're talking about drug use, whatever. But that's happening all over the country. Yeah. You know, that is not just here. It's not unique at all. It's not no. unique at all to no. us. It's happening everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But there, are, there is a good community of people who live here and want to continue living here. And I remain part of the, kind of the, the, the group that yeah. is kind of fighting for it. We're in, Jack. We're in, mate. We gained entry to the Seven Sisters. Look at the state of that. Oh, I smell that damp. 
Yeah, so it absolutely stinks of damp and mold here. Should we go as, as high as possible? Yeah, 19. <laughs> So we are going to the penthouse floor of the Seven Sisters. Let's see what life's like at the very top of this tower block. I'm pretty sure that someone has either spewed up or spilled some baked beans just right in the middle of all the stairs. Look at all this frayed walling. So when the authorities were trying to incentivise people to move out of the units here, they offered people £7,500 to move out so that they could knock down these towers. And a lot of people took that money. That's why there are so many vacant units now. So these are the three whole flats, which you can see the Seven Sisters maybe just in the background there. Another development of social housing flats in the Rochdale area. And unfortunately, Notorious because a young boy died due to complications from mould inhalation in 2020. Consequently, that's um, been a kick up the arse for some of the housing authorities who quite rightly needed to react to this tragedy. So one thing that this part of the North West is famous for is having a vibrant Asian community. And as we're driving through Rochdale, I've just seen this food truck and I'm gonna see what they have to offer. They probably don't get vloggers like me coming and stopping at their food truck. What's the speciality? It depends on how hungry you are. How hungry am I? Yeah. Medium hungry, medium hungry. But I want something as authentic as possible. I don't want a chicken burger or anything like that. Uh, try, try the mixed steak. Mixed steak? Yeah. yeah. Which one's that on there? Stick. Um, I show you video. Show, show me a video, yeah. Do you work here too or are you just eat here? I work here. Okay. This is, a mixed is that what is that? Is that a. I ain't with the council, yeah. mate, no. Is that um, like lamb or beef for? It's a lamb and chicken. Lamb and chicken? Yeah. Let's do one of them, yeah. Let's do one of them. Alright. Lamb and. I'll get the mixed steak, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to spicy normal? Spicy. Let's spicy. do spicy. Yeah. How are you, okay? How are you mate? You alright? Right, yeah. I'm doing a YouTube vlog and I just drove past yeah. and saw your street food van. No problem. And I'm getting your famous mixed steak. Yeah, very, yeah. It's very the famous. The best thing you do. Best thing to do. Yeah. yeah. And oh, extra I mean. spicy, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're worried you didn't do your hair for the vlog, mate. Neither did we. <laughs> oh, I don't work for the council, mate. Quite the opposite. It's all homemade, freshly marinated, fresh made every day. How long have you been here? About five months since five July. Five months. Yeah. yeah. Successful? Successful. Yeah. It's going very well. Prices look good. How much is the mixed steak, sorry? Uh, it's nine pounds. Nine pounds? That's uh, kebab. Chicken steak, grilled with peppers, onions, chopped with salad, sauce, and cheese. Yeah, nice big portion. And what's the background for the idea? Like, but it's just all the street food from Pakistan. Okay, you know yeah. Because I mean? we go to Pakistan quite often. Yeah, we eat the food on the streets of Pakistan, so we thought we'd bring the streets of Pakistan to lovely Rochdale. What's it called, Zaki's? Yeah, Zaki's street food. It's named after named after my son. Named after your son? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there you go. So yeah. satisfied. He's got the certificate. He's got a five star hygiene. Five star, let's film that. Five star food hygiene. Five star Nice one, mate, nice. This is uh, the lovely wife. Hello. This is my brother in law, it's my sister. How are you, man? You alright? Yeah. Right? yeah. Yep. And sister over there. Yeah. It's a family run business. Awesome. So it's not all Pakistani food, it's like it's, oh, like, it's a fusion. Yeah. It's a British ex Asian. Yeah. Co collab. Yeah. Thank you. So what's a what's a Pakistani tea Asian like? Tea. It's Asian tea. It's mixed, tea food, Asian. Yeah, mixed with spices. Yeah. Masala. Oh, masala. Yeah. Yeah. Chai is very nice. Oh, it's a bit like chai. Yeah. Nice. A little bit. Yeah. But yeah. What a lamb Yeah. That is amazing. That is like a sweet, aromatic sort of mix of like a traditional herbal tea and also like a like a chai tea like you get in India. Yeah. Oh Jesus, so I've got that and chicken. Yeah, it's all going to get chopped up now in pieces. Yeah, yeah. Like a Philly cheese steak sort yeah. of thing. You've seen one of them before. You enjoy it, it's all mixed with flavour and all that. Yeah. It smells amazing, man. Ah, but dig it. Oh, okay. Everything goes into one big mix. Yeah. No other one in the uh, Ben. What are your opening times? We've been open from 10 till 10. 10 till 10? Seven days a week, yeah. Seven days a week, 10 till 10. And you're, all, you guys are here? Yeah. So not just 12 hours a day, prep time, close down time. Yeah. So 14, 15 hours a day. Yeah. 
You're the hardest working man in Rochester, mate. You've got to try, it, wouldn't you? You've got to try, mate. Consistency, hard work, dedication. Don't give in. You will be I'm successful, mate. Absolutely. It's a mistake. That's the one, mate. So if this is no good, you recommended it. It's your fault. Yeah, I yeah. recommend it. It's a very good. Confidence. Yeah. It smells good, anyway. So. Yeah. It smells, yeah. tastes like everything's a good. Awesome, mate. Yeah. Oh, we get cheese too. Yeah. I promise you it'll be the best age of food you've had. Thank you so much, mate. Fancy a bite? Not for me, mate, to be Not honest. for you? No, I'm, I'm good, thank you. It's going to be super, super hot. So let's try the mixed meat, kebab, chips, salad, delight from Zaki's Food. That is an explosion of flavour. It's pretty spicy as well. It's basically like a really flavourful and like my mouth's exploding with flavour a really flavourful mixed kebab meat and chips it is spicy and the portions are huge oh man that is a spicy feed I've got to go say thank you that's amazing yeah. that's like it was like the spiciest most flavourful mixed meat and chips yeah. I've ever had sensory overload <laughs> yeah it's probably all over my face it's yeah. a big portion yeah. yeah it's probably all in my beard yeah. you enjoy it yeah that's amazing mate yeah I'm going to shake your hand thank you so much Appreciate it, man. Cheers. I'll give you a shout out on the channel, no problem, and I'll put your Instagram in the uh, description and all that thing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, mate. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for cooking for me. Zaki Street Food. I don't know where I am. In where are we in Rochdale? Oldham Road, opposite the Enterprise. Oldham Road, opposite the Enterprise, just outside the town centre. Yeah. I'm gonna go sweat this out. Possibly have a lie down. Right on. Folks, I've enjoyed my time in Rochdale. A town with a proud industrial past and a complicated, slightly troubled recent, but hopefully a promising future. Jack, thanks so much, so much for showing me around, mate. Problem, my friend. This tram takes me back to the city centre to get the train. Sweet, mate. Until next time. Stop from the Kingsway Business Club.